so you are you are on the ground today, uh, campaigning, talking to voters. Uh, what is your sense of the the, the reaction? Mm. To you? Well, we've been on the our candidates here in Pasir Pongo have been on the ground every day. Uh, we are reaching out to our, our voters in their homes, making sure they get our manifesto and all our materials so that they understand what they're voting for. And then also we are reaching out to them uh, at places where they congregate, uh, especially in the uh, hawker centres and so on, where they're having their meals, shopping centres, where they have a little bit more time to speak. And of course at the MRT stations when we come, it's just to give them very quickly some, some quick information. For example, if there's a rally going on and so on, to encourage them to come. So generally speaking, I would say the voters are thinking very carefully about who they will vote for, thinking about the issues, and that's very welcome. Uh, did you, do you have a sense of how the young voters, especially, are, are reacting to this general election? It seems a lot hotter, a lot of a lot of debates. Mm. Uh, well, I've particularly been sort of reaching out to, to people whom I, who look like their first-time voters, yeah. more useful ones, and uh, I, my sense is that they are thinking very seriously about the issues. So they haven't voted before, so there's no sort of a habit pattern that they've formed, uh, and uh, they think very seriously. They have serious questions to ask. They read the material seriously. They come up when they see us uh, and they, they talk to us, uh, to different uh, candidates, ask questions. And my sense is that uh, I've got very positive vibes from the young people, like the first-time voters. Is the PAB confident of, uh, of getting this, this segment of the population? Well, there's work to be done. Even there's more questioning. There works, there's work to be done. I welcome the fact that they're more questioning, they're more discerning. Uh, that means that they will look at the material, they'll look at the material, the, the programs being offered, the quality of the candidates, what it means for them, and uh, I, I believe that they will make a good decision after all this serious consideration. One of the things that um, SDA team has been bringing up, bringing up, uh, they brought it up a few times, is this idea of a nominated minister. They say that don't worry uh, that you will lose your deputy prime minister and defense minister because we will table a constitutional amendment after we come if we, if we elect us that will allow for nominated ministers. <laughs> well, that doesn't speak very much for confidence in themselves. I mean, if, if they feel that they're good enough to take over from me, then they, they should say so and, and please, uh, please, uh, please take over the portfolios and so on when they get elected. I mean, it seems a very strange way to uh, advertise themselves that. You know, please elect me, but put somebody else in office instead. Well, but they're only running for seven seats, so they're not looking to take over government. <laughs> but still, seems a very strange way to campaign. Please elect for me. Please vote me. Vote for for the opposition. Right. But uh, put somebody else who was from the PAP uh, in office that you've just voted out. I think it's a very strange way to campaign. If you ask me. Right. right. Okay. Thank you. Um, Aljunied has been has been seen as the the hottest seat for yes. the coming GE. What do you think is at stake for Aljunied voters and for Singapore as a whole in Aljunied? I think if we focus on the real issues, which is who can serve the residents of Aljunied better, take care of their interests, the local issues, make sure their town is well maintained, I think those are the serious issues that um, the residents of Aljunied need to be looking at. And there are also wider national issues at work. Uh, you know, who is it that they want in Parliament? Uh, what kind of government do they want to represent them? If they're good people who can serve at a national level, uh, please vote them in too. But the important thing I think in Aljunied is for the residents, who, who is in the best position to look after your interests at the local level? In the town, if you have a problem, who is most able to help you solve that problem? and represent you and make the best possible case for you. I think those are the things at stake at a very local level for them. What about for the rest of Singapore? Because this is the first GRC that, that put forward to the opposition some people are saying. Well, it, it's not for the rest of Singapore to vote in Aljunit. It's for the voters in Aljunit to vote. And uh, I think it's putting a very heavy burden on them, which the opposition is putting, to ask them to vote for the rest of Singapore. It's not... It's not their responsibility, the voters of Aljunit. Voters of Aljunit should vote for themselves, see the issues, and voters everywhere else in Singapore should also vote for those candidates and the teams whom they think will serve them best. So some people have built this Aljunit battle as a, a, asking vote, the Aljunit voters to choose between their own self-interest and the advancement of, uh, <coughs> some people say, multi-party democracy or... or 
the opposition's cause and how do you, do you agree with this characterization? Well, to be quite frank, uh, when I've been meeting uh, my, 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 the, candidate, uh, sorry, the candidates have been meeting uh, residents and so on, and I asked them about this First World Parliament thing, it's not something that connects with the band in the street. Uh, it, it, you know, it's very distant from what their immediate interests are. They want to make sure that it's a good MP who, who, who will run their, their, their estate properly, maintain it. If they have a problem, somebody whom they can approach, who can help them solve their problems. This, is, uh, this concept is, is actually quite distant. Uh, it's, it's very abstract, First World Parliament, and they don't understand it very well after all this argument back and forth. And I'm not very clear that it has a meaning for them in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a direct sense for many of the residents that I've spoken to. So you don't think it's going, going to succeed for the WP? I don't know. The, the, the voters have to decide for themselves. The voters have to decide for themselves. Uh, certainly there's a desire for more representation in Parliament, and uh, uh, whatever the outcome of the voting, there will already be at least three times as many opposition voices in Parliament right. through the NCMP scheme. So right. voices will be there, right. vigorous debate <coughs> will be there. If I can just touch briefly on Hong because you've been there yes. more than other ministers, what is your sense of, the, of uh, Desmond's chances? Um, Desmond has an uphill battle, I mean, right. to be frank. Um, but uh, now that uh, Mr. Lo Tia Kiang has decided to leave Ao Kang and leave the residents there to go to Ao Junit, uh, I think uh, the, the residents there now have an opportunity to decide on the best person, the best man who can serve them. And uh, uh, Mr. Desmond uh, Chu is a very sincere man and we, we chose him specially because of his sincerity, his willingness to serve and uh, I think he's gone in in the last three months he has... Um, given an inkling of the things that he could do if the uh, residents of Afghan give him the opportunity to serve them. Right. Mr. Lau is saying that uh, this <coughs> HUDC privatization saga is, is an attack on his character. Do you agree with him? I, I'm, I, I'm not sure why he makes it an attack on his character. I mean, it's, it's a factual issue. Right. Um, uh, uh, so far as I understand, uh, the, uh, the, the, the estate that is being privatized has asked for some information which has usually been very forthcoming from other town councils and uh, I, I think the question is the sim question is simply uh, why, why is that information not forthcoming? I, I, I don't see that as a personal attack. I mean, it's something which is the responsibility of every town council to fulfil. Right. Right. Yes. Last question on, uh, on PM's speech yesterday. He said the word sorry twice. Uh, some people were, were quite surprised and some people's and in fact, the opposition parties at the, at the rallies at night, they were saying that, uh, well, you see, because we have this opposition challenge, now the PAP has to come out and say sorry. <laughs> well, what is your response to that? You know, the folklore always is that the PAP you know, is, is inflexible and unbending. But actually, we do realize that we are mortal and that we are not perfect and we are always making decisions in, a, in, a, in an arena in which information is not perfect. And you have to make the best possible decision at that point in time for the interests of Singapore and Singaporeans. And then, as new information comes in, uh, you have to adjust and move, move along and try and tune your policies to, 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 to make them fit and work properly. And, and that's always been the case for us. Uh, so, uh, um, I, I think uh, PM yesterday was... Uh, uh, stating uh, the, the method by which we work and asking for the understanding of Singaporeans to bear with us uh, as we overcome these problems. Uh, it's a little bit like sitting on a roller coaster. I mean, the last two years has really been a roller coaster. We have um, come from this level, gone into a very big dip, come up very sharply. We are a little bit higher than where we were two years ago. But, uh, you know, it's been a stomach churning experience. And as you're, you're sitting there now, you know, of course your stomach feels a bit churned and your head is a bit spinning slightly because of the very violent ride that we have had because of the global crisis in the last two years. So I can fully understand uh, why Singaporeans feel a little dislocated, feel a little uh, 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 unhappy uh, coming through this, this crisis. And even though there's been growth, uh, why, why Singaporeans feel a little uh, disorientated and, and unhappy because of that? Because it's been a huge uh, transition. Huge, huge roller coaster ride in the last two years because of the crisis. Thank you.